Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday, March the 9th, and we are gathering together for morning prayer. And I am so grateful for this opportunity to be with you this morning and to share some scripture and um, lift up one of our ordinary radicals and um, have some prayer time together. So thank you for being here this day. And uh, it looks like it's going to be just an incredibly beautiful day, a, a touch and a taste of spring, which I know brings uh, so much peace and hope to our hearts. And so welcome. Uh, my name is Denise Childers, and I am a retired uh, elder in the Virginia Conference and have the privilege of serving here at Grace United Methodist Church with our senior adult ministry. And so it's always um, my privilege and my joy to be with you and also to uh, stay connected to the senior adults. I see Sharon is here. Good morning to you with your bright, shiny face. And Lynn, how nice to see you. Uh, Judy, good morning. Ruth, wow, welcome. So nice to see all of you. Lynn mentioned this peace cross and I lift up the light, the light of Christ um, that is with us and within us and among us and goes before us and surrounds us. And this cross and this candle um, we're part of the uh, wonderful treasures that um, I was given from Nancy Miller's um, lovely, um, she had so many beautiful things that she had um, gathered through her ministry and through her lifetime. And this was uh, gifted uh, to me to use here among our generations room here at the church and with our older adults. And so um, yes, peace, the peace of Christ is with us this morning, and I'm so grateful. Hi, Debbie. Good morning to you and Anne. Nice to see you, Carol. Um, hope Wayne is improving with his recent injury. And um, just a joy to be together this morning. So thank you for making the effort. Hi, Victoria. Good morning to you. As we begin today, um, the response that I want us to use is lead us by your light O Lord that we might shine like the Sun lead us by your light O Lord that we might shine like the Sun and just to imagine what are the ways that you and I in our everyday life can bring light and love to those around us and so as we begin I want us to join in a prayer and I'm using words from the African American spiritual guide my feet as our prayer. So let us pray together as we begin. Guide my feet, Lord, while I run this race. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Stand by me, Lord, while I run this race. I'm your child, Lord, while I run this race. Search my heart, Lord, while I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. Amen don't want to run this race in vain and um, inviting God into each part of, of our lives. Um, yes, a wonderful memory of Nancy for sure and um, uh, her spirit certainly is with us and her, her loving kindness. Um, she would be thrilled. I, I think someone mentioned last week to, to me or to our group how thrilled she would be to know that we're gathering um, regularly for morning prayer. Hi Hannah, nice to see you this morning as well. So as we begin, uh, we use our book, um, the Book of Common Prayer, but also um, the take on it of ordinary radicals and what that even means. And here is the opening um, collect. O Lord, let my ro soul rise to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen come let us bow down and bend the knee let us kneel before the Lord our maker amen as I was looking through uh, this book that we've been using as a guide whoops <laughs> The Book of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. I was reading um, in one of the boxes about 
order and spontaneity and that um, both of those are important in our lives but I was so struck by part of what it said and I want to read this to you it says God is constantly coloring outside the lines Jesus challenges the structures that oppress and exclude and bust through any traditions that put limitations on love. Love cannot be harnessed. Don't you love that? God is constantly coloring outside the lines. And so as I was thinking this week about ordinary radicals and who um, I might like for us to um, think about today, um, the person that, that came to my heart is um, one of our United Methodist bishops who's no longer uh, living in this world but whose uh, witness and love and um, leadership has made a huge difference and her name is Leod Leontine Turpo Kelly and I don't know if some of you may have had the privilege to know her along the journey uh, she was actually from the Virginia Conference um, she did not begin her ministry until her early 50s, which I think speaks so strongly that sometimes we may um, limit ourselves and say, well, I can't do that. Um, I'm, I'm too old. Um, I'm past the prime of doing that. But in her early 50s, her, she had been a school teacher. She was married to a pastor, and he had died. But before his death, he was encouraging her to um, use her gifts and she had gifts for ministry and so she became a lay speaker and then she um, eventually went to seminary and got her Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary in 1976 and she was ordained an elder in the Virginia Conference of the United Methodist Church in 1977. Let me pause for a moment and say good morning to Marilyn and Clayton. Glad you could uh, join with us this morning. So as we think more about Bishop Kelly, um, she became a bishop in 1984, but she, even though she was an elder in the Virginia Conference and she was highly respected among her peers, she was not endorsed by the Virginia Conference. And it's a, it's a long and interesting story, but she ended up being elected a bishop in the Western jurisdiction in 1984. She became the second female bishop in the United Methodist Church and also the first African-American female bishop of any major denomination in the world in 1984. That's not that long ago, friends, but um, the world continues to change. And um, as we read that line earlier, God was coloring outside the lines. Jesus challenges structures that oppress and exclude. And so... Um, our, our minds and our hearts are challenged and opened to allow women and people of color to bring leadership and what a, what a gift um, her leadership was. Uh, she was a trailblazer. Her historic election opened doors for other clergywomen but also other people of color. Um, and you can read a lot about uh, Bishop Kelly if you go. There are some YouTube videos. I've actually posted a short one of her speaking um, with this um, morning prayer if you'd like to watch that but if you just go to YouTube you can find more information about her and hear her talk about that historic election and her sense of call uh, to become a bishop. Um, she was once she was elected because of her age she could only serve for four years but she spent her retirement traveling around the world and preaching she was the one presiding at General Conference when the United Methodist Church adopted the initiative for Africa University and became a founding member of the board. And she was known as a wonderful preacher and leader, but she also was one who challenged systems, who spoke truth to power, and she loved to share in ways that people could relate to. Uh, one of her dear friends said about her, when persons disagreed with her, she found that moment as an opportunity to love people into goodness so that the issue at hand found common agreement on both sides. So she was a peacemaker, I think, even though she was a world changer. And her faith um, and her trust in God really were strong and powerful and um, drew others to her, but uh, drew others to Christ as well. 
Uh, good morning. Uh, Lynn says, yeah, that was not that long ago. 1984 was not that long ago. Um, some of you may have known Bishop Kelly, I don't know, um, since she did serve in the Virginia Conference. Uh, one of the um, pastors now who was in her congregation when um, she was a pastor in the 1960s and the mid-70s, his name is Reverend Kevin Elmore, and he grew up in her congregation at Andrew Chapel in the Rappahannock District. But he described her and said she was about people. She was always lifting people up. And what a wonderful thing to say about someone and to know about their ministry. I did have the privilege to meet her and to be in her presence on several occasions. And she really did radiate the love of Christ. And she still clearly stood up for things she believed and understood that God was calling her and our United Methodist Church to do and to be. And so I, like many other clergywomen, but many other folks around the world, are so grateful for her witness and for the ways that she was willing to be used by God. Um, an ordinary radical, someone who took that call, who heard the call, who responded to the call and sought to become a leader um, in our denomination and then throughout the world as one who uh, spoke up for those who um, perhaps had no voice of their own. So I'm grateful for Bishop Kelly today and I want to um, encourage you to perhaps read some more about her or watch one of her videos and just uh, learn more about how important she was and is to our connection as United Methodists. Cameron Trimble is a pastor who uh, sends out emails about three times a week and she sent an email this morning and I read this prayer and I just thought it was so appropriate um, in response to Bishop Kelly's witness and these are her words she says may the wisdom of our elders be written upon our hearts may the presence of the Saints be woven into our beings may the peace of Christ be with us always for all the days of our lives amen and amen the scripture that I wanted to share this morning is from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 17 through 24. And these words um, are words of encouragement to that church, but also to us as people of faith. These are the words from 1 Thessalonians. Pray continually, which is why we've gathered. Give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't suppress the spirit. Allow for that spontaneity. Don't brush off spirit-inspired messages. But examine everything carefully and hang on to what is good. Avoid every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept intact and blameless at our Lord Jesus Christ's coming. The one who is calling you is faithful and will do this. The one who is calling you is faithful and will do this. We can be trusting in the faithfulness of God and God's goodness as we continue this journey and as we seek to uh, discover the ways that God might use each one of us um, to make a difference in the world this day. Amen. As we gather, we um, spend time in prayer, and we are mindful of the folks who have um, added prayer concerns and needs and celebrations to our weekly prayer list at Grace, and you are certainly invited to add your prayers to that list so that um, many folks will be in prayer for you, but also um, in these moments, if there are names or concerns that you would want to add, um, please do that as well. Um, hi, Diane. Diane saying prayers for my sister-in-law, Sandy. She's having tests uh, this Wednesday, so we want to add Sandy to our list. Thank you. Let me uh, 
read some of the names and the concerns that um, are on our current list. And like I said, if you have others, um, we will certainly want to be in prayer for them. But as we begin, um, let's just take a moment to take a deep breath of God's peace. Let's breathe in God's peace. And breathe out those things that may be niggling at us, those things that we may be carrying, those heavy burdens that are weighing us down today, um, allowing God's grace and God's peace to uh, sort of blow into our hearts and lives even as we um, seek to offer that gift to others. And I see Diane added um, that there's a possible recurrence of cancer. So we want to be mindful. And here's, here's the list um, that's, that is before us right now. First, we have prayers of gratitude for vaccines received and for all who are helping to make that possible. Um, gratitude for opportunities to worship in person once again. And this coming Sunday, um, the opportunity will be to gather here at Grace again at 11. If you um, are able and would like to do that, please be sure you register so that you can participate in in-person worship. Gratitude for medical personnel and medical care. Gratitude for frontline workers at supermarkets and maintenance people and the trash people and so many people that keep our communities uh, safe. We're grateful for law enforcement and those who um, provide for us in that way. We offer gratitude for teachers and administrators and for schools that are seeking to safely open once again. We are grateful for our own health and strength that allows us to be here together. And we had a note of praise from Alzira for her safe trip to North Carolina, closing on her new home and a visit with her son, Arthur. So um, answers to prayer for sure. We are mindful of those currently undergoing cancer treatment, Rue, Gary, Michelle, and there are probably others that you may want to add to that list as well. We are mindful of those with chronic health concerns those with COVID related concerns and those who are currently in the hospital or currently struggling with uh, COVID related illness. We are mindful of those in long term care settings uh, and those who care for them, uh, for families that are still separated and um, for um, what's look looking like hopeful opportunities to be reunited at least um, occasionally. Um, and we pray for those who have family members they're caring for at home. We also are mindful of all who are grieving this day. Uh, for Cheryl and Hal at the family and their family at the death of Samantha. For Bruce at the death of his wife, Pat. And Bruce is a friend of Sandy and John. For Ron at the death of his brother, Lyle. Many with health concerns and uh, those who are undergoing treatments and testing, Jamie, the son of Sue and Bill, Terry, Peter's brother, Charles, Mark, Phil, and Lisa, friends of Paul and Debbie, Richard, Zan, Kathy, Randy, friend Cecil, Randy's friend, and also Cecil, and these are friends of Teresa, Betty, a friend of Bob and Mary Kay, uh, the best family, and Nana Rosalind's sister, Endring, and this came from Shannon. We're also mindful of Barb. Her surgery has been postponed, and she's asking for patience and trusting, being able to trust that God has this. Uh, we're praying for those with other challenges, those who are in need of employment and struggling with job concerns, and special prayers for Ty, Russ and Terry's son, who's under a lot of pressure. We're mindful of um, mental health concerns and unspoken concerns. Oftentimes people have things in their hearts that um, they don't want to say out loud, but they want us to be prayerful for them. And so we lift up each of those. Uh, Lynn says her aunt Diane is suffering from 
uh, some serious heart concerns and dementia. And so we add uh, Diane to our list as well this day. Let us join our hearts in a time of prayer. Oh, holy God, we thank you for the peace of your presence that invades our lives, that fills us with hope. We thank you that we have been reminded this day of your faithfulness, that as we seek to follow you, that as we seek to pay attention to your Holy Spirit, that you will guide us that you will bless us, that you will lead us, that you will give us courage and grace and strength for each moment. We thank you when there seems to be no way that you will provide a way. And so we come to you with gratitude for the gifts that we have given, been given for a new day, for the beautiful possibilities it holds, for the opportunity to be your presence in this world through the gift of your love. We thank you, O oh God, for answers to prayer. So many times throughout these past months, we have lifted our concerns, our needs, our heartaches to you again and again together. And you have continued to faithfully answer us and help us, and listen to us, and love us. And we thank you for that gift, oh God. We thank you. We do pray this day for all on our prayer list, all who are struggling and suffering, all who are waking up this morning with burdens and health concerns, those who have physical needs, who are not sure how they will pay their rent or what they will eat for lunch today. Oh God, we ask that you would give us hearts of compassion, that we would be mindful of ways that we can reach out and offer what is needed. We continue to pray for each other. We continue to pray, oh God, for those undergoing testing, for those being treated for cancer and other illnesses, for those whose chronic conditions make each day a struggle. And for those whose hearts are broken by grief and loss, we ask, O oh God, that you would come alongside and offer the support and love and hope that you can give and that you will give. We thank you for, even in this season of Lent, that we look forward and anticipate the promise of resurrection and new life. And we are grateful. God, I thank you for this community that gathers together to pray, whether in person in these moments or throughout the, the day and the weeks to come. Bless each one I ask, and as we seek your spirit and as we seek your guidance and as we seek to follow you, I pray that you will make a, a plain path, that we may run this race to your glory. I'm so grateful for those who've gone before us, oh God. I'm grateful for Bishop Leontine Kelly. I'm grateful for others in our own families and friendships in our own church family who have taught us so much of what it means to be faithful, of what it means to follow you. And even now, oh God, as a new confirmation class begins in these coming days, we pray for these young disciples we ask that you would bless those who teach them and open their hearts and their minds to know and understand and grow in faith. We thank you for the privilege of worship and as we continue to move forward and seek to be um, in community in person once again, we thank you for that joy. We also thank you for the ways that we stay connected uh, virtually and through in online worship and through this prayer time and through Bible study. We pray and thank you for the grief group. We pray and thank you for the 
youth and children that stay connected. We pray, O oh God, that we will have an imagination that you have given us, that we will dare to be bold in our faith and in our love, that we will dare to color outside the lines, that we will dare to, with Jesus, um, not, not put up with um, the ways that people are excluded, but that we will include with your love. That is the best gift. And we thank you and we praise you. We offer our hearts before you this day. And we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, Terry. Um, prayers for Terry and her mom. I've been a hard morning. I know what that's like sometimes. It doesn't take much um, to make things challenging. So we're glad you were able to. Uh, come and join us at this point, and um, our prayers will certainly be with you and your mom today. We end our time with this prayer. Lord God, when the hungry are fed, the sick healed, the lonely made family, the outcast brought in, the sinner forgiven, the tyrant transformed, and the enemy reconciled, we know your work by the fruit it produces. May our lives bear fruit worthy of your name. Amen. And then the sending forth are these words. May the peace, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you this day. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. This is our prayer this day, and um, we are grateful, and we send you forth. Thank you for being here, and I pray that as you have been blessed, you will be a blessing to someone else. Thank you. Peace to you. Bye-bye.